everybody. This is Bit7 Crypto News Digest Weekly. The head of SEC supported opinion that Ethereum could lose the signs of a security. Chairman of the US Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, Jay Clayton, confirmed that Ethereum and similar cryptocurrencies could have been securities in the past, but could lose this status over time. Last June, the head of SEC Corporate Finance Unit, William Hinman, said, As far as I understand the current state of ETH, Ethereum network and its decentralized structure, the existing offers and selling ETH are not securities transactions. The application of securities laws to ETH brings little benefit. Although the statement by Hinman was perceived as an important step towards the elimination of uncertainty in the issue of cryptocurrency regulation, not everyone believed that it could be regarded as an official reflection of the position of the department. Coin Center, along with Congressman Ted Butt, sent a letter to Clayton asking him to comment on Hinman's words and publish the official response of the SEC chairman this Tuesday. A digital asset can be offered and sold initially as a security because it meets the definition of an investment contract. But this designation may change over time if the digital asset is subsequently offered and sold in such a way that it will no longer meet the definition, explained Jane Clayton in his comment. In November last year, Clayton said that SEC would not allow the launch of Bitcoin ETF until the problem of manipulation in the cryptocurrency market is resolved. Coin Exchange found guilty of cancelling trades selling one ETH for 10 BTC. The Singapore International Court of Commerce has found Coin Bitcoin Exchange guilty of cancelling transactions of B2C2 liquidity provider in the amount of 3085 BTC. It is reported by the Business Times. According to the court, having cancelled the transactions concluded by B2C2 on the abnormal rate in April 2017, Coin violated the terms of the contract and did not comply with the, its obligations. Let's recall that time B2C2 created seven selling orders of Ethereum with 10 bitcoins per unit, which was 125 times higher than the current exchange rate. The funds received were automatically credited to the B2C2 exchange account and 308 ETH written off. The next day, Coin rejected the deals and the balances on the accounts were set at the values before the transaction happened. The purchase became possible only because of a system error in Coin, so the seller suffered losses from such a transaction and cancelled it. The exchange explained trying to return their funds. But B2C2 for court demanded to recover from Coin 3085 BTC because under the terms of the contract, the exchange had no right to unilaterally cancel the transaction after it was concluded. However, the court, having recognized the exchange as guilty, did not agree with the amount of compensation, taking into account that substantially increased rate of Bitcoin from the moment of the filing the claim. The exact amount will be determined at the time of the next hearing. Note that at the time of the transaction, 3085 BTC amounted to $3.7 million. At the current rate, this amount would be almost $12 million. Quan representatives did not rule out that they would appeal this judgment. Cryptopay Exchange has transferred 35% of assets to new wallets. Cryptopay Cryptocurrency Exchange reports that it is taking steps to restart the platform. At the moment, employees are engaged in the collection and transfer of assets to new wallets. We have already managed to collect and transfer 35% of the assets of the exchange to new wallets. You must first complete this procedure before restarting our platform," representatives of Cryptopia commented on Twitter. This week, it also became known that the managers of the exchange realized the option of cancelling applications that were left by users before hacking. The API of the training platform is still disabled, so customers can cancel previously left orders only through the site. A little later, the support service was resumed, so that users could have the opportunity to resolve issues related to the reset of two-factor authentication and passwords. Hacked in January of this year, the New Zealand Exchange is gradually moving to restart its operation in the field of providing services with cryptocurrencies. At the end of January, Elementus analysts estimated Cryptopia's losses at $16 million in ETH and ERC-20 tokens. 
At the same time, representatives of the exchange noted that Cryptopia lost 9.4% of assets as a result of hacking. Bloomberg warns of Bitcoin going down. While the top 100 cryptocurrencies are in the green zone and show signs of further growth, Bloomberg believes that the public should not be too hopeful since Bitcoin can go down. In the recent report, Bloomberg stated that technical indicators signaling long-term consumer demand for Bitcoin are deteriorating, potentially showing that sales pressure may increase. In recent weeks, the price of Bitcoin has remained steadily below $4,000, having made several unsuccessful attempts at breakthrough. Despite the fact that the average daily price movement of Bitcoin has become positive, the resistant level of $4,000 prevents the digital asset to go higher, and the inability to break through this level will cause prolonged pressure from sellers. Bloomberg intelligence analyst Mike McGlone commented on the dynamics of Bitcoin prices. The industry is ready to take a path to lower prices. The conditions are similar to November, just before the collapse. The courses are consolidating at closer intervals. Etoro Center analyst for the market, Matty Greenspan, recognizes that the altcoins demonstrate an upward movement and admits that their time has come. Approaching the climax of crypto winter, we see that in the recent weeks some of the altcoins show impressive results. Now we are experiencing a period that industry insiders like to call the altcoin season. Over 90% of cryptocurrency exchanges overstate their trading volumes. The analytical site NeonBlocks, using the public data of CoinGecko and ranked traffic, allows you to determine the approximate ratio of the stated trading volumes on cryptocurrency exchanges with their actual attendance. According to the resource, in aggregate only 7%, that's $1.6 billion, of the daily trading volumes declared by the exchanges are correlated with the number of visitors to the exchange. So, suspiciously rich investors trade on BitThumb. 71,000 users, $22,986 per visitor. OKEX, $67,961. Hobby Global, $53,952. Coinbean, $16,029,392. HitBDC, $119,4749. Upbeat, $54,000. $6,937 and others. For comparison, Bitfinex with 156,000 visitors shows only $764 per visitor and Exmo with 45,000 shows $387. Although this data is an approximation, a recent crypto integrity study provides further evidence that most crypto exchanges provide excessive trading data. The published report states that almost 90% of all trading volumes in February 2019 were not real. Among those exchanges are OKEX, Hobby Global, Coinbean, HitBTC and others mentioned above. In addition, in the middle of December last year, the Blockchain Transparency Institute published a report stating that most of the top 25 cryptocurrency exchanges provide excessive data on trading volumes on their sites, and that only Bitfinex disclosed pretty accurate information. The report said that 87% of trading platforms actually falsify this data. The report says that coin market cap also does not provide reliable information and that data from 11 of 25 exchanges on coin market cap are rigged by 99%. On that note, we recommend to try out fairly new but already established Bit7 platform with its unprecedented 100 leverage option to gain amazing profit. Competition in the Bitcoin futures market is increasing. Barry Silbert invested in Bucked competitor. CoinFlex Bitcoin Futures platform announced it has received investments from the Digital Currency Group (DCG) and Polychain Capital, the two most well-known venture capital firms in the cryptocurrency space. The amount of funding received was not disclosed. CoinFlex is officially based in Hong Kong with registration in the Seychelles. However, it is a division of the British cryptocurrency company CoinFlow Group. 
like Bakht, which has not yet to be launched, Coinflex offers Bitcoin futures with physical delivery. Coinflex also plans to launch deliverable futures contracts in stablecoin or stablecoin pairs. To encourage liquidity traders, the platform will use its own Flexcoin token. Rewards will be paid depending on the share of traders in the total daily trading volume. Flexcoin tokens can later be used to receive discounts on transaction fees. Conflex is regarded as one of the competitors of the Bucked Bitcoin Futures platform, the launch of which has been postponed several times already. Earlier, it was reported that Intercontinental Exchange ICE, the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange, expects to invest up to $25 million in the development of Bucked by the end of the year. As for the Digital Currency Group, in February it became one of the participants in the investment round of the blockchain startup Nivora, which focuses on capital markets. In 2018, Polychain Capital became the first hedge fund in the cryptocurrency space, with assets under management exceeding $1 billion. At the end of January this year, the company raised $175 million to create a cryptocurrency venture fund. Tether quietly made changes to the terms of the USDT support. Users kept again questioning the practice of the issues of the stablecoin USDT Tether, after some of them noticed on March 14th that the company's website had changed the information that its asset was fully provided with the mass media dollars. The new version, which the company has presented on its website without any additional announcements, states each tether is always 100% secured by our reserves, which include traditional currencies and a cash equivalent, and may from time to time include other assets and creditor rights from loans that tether issues to third parties, including affiliated units. One such affiliate, for example, is Bitfinex. Reddit users considered using non-US assets to support USDT as a potential risk factor. I suppose we are again forced to trust third parties and return to an incomplete reserve, wrote one of the concerned Redditors. Another suggested that if the Tether is supported with cryptocurrencies, a drop in their prices may force people to buy USDT, leading to increasing of the stablecoin issue and the support will decrease. Earlier, there were comments on the possibility of using assets other than US dollar from people related to the company, but only on unofficial sources, such as Reddit, while on their website they stated, each tether is always supported in the ratio of 1 to 1 to traditional currency from our reserves. The company has not yet committed on recent changes. If you want to make money with crypto trading, join bitsound.com. Link is below. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like our video.